Hello everyone, welcome back to the RationalInvestor.com's uh, weekend show, uh, Broiler Chicken Show. <laughs> Good morning everyone, uh, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. And actually it's funny, uh, we have uh, an expression on the site, let's just make sure the YouTube page is working. Good morning, everyone. Hey, uh, it is. Yeah, so that's working. Um, and I've got the Hangout here in a glorious Technicolor big screen here, so maybe I'll, uh, I'll minimize that a little bit so I can see you YouTubers. There you are. I don't know if there's anybody over there or not. It's always uh, fun to uh, see um, people... Uh, Zocknax, not Zocknix. Hey, hey, Zocknix. <laughs> uh, did I ever tell you guys I back in the 1990s? I think it was. I got uh, uh, a letter from the future, <laughs> which is so funny. But it's actually interesting. It's uh, I've kept it in the back of my mind. One line from that letter, uh, and uh, the the letter title was like Zocknix or something like that. But I've kept uh, one line from that uh, letter. I remember it just resonated with me so well. And uh, actually, it's, it's really framed a lot of my uh, thinking through this crazy thing called life. And it, uh, it said that uh, in the future, and it was like year 2348 or something like that, um, humanity had collectively realized, decided, it got to the point, where uh, I realized it was part of the universe. And really, humanity is nothing more than the universe itself reaching consciousness and self-awareness, uh, which I find fascinating. I've uh, thought about that so long, and I can really see it in the human species uh, through my life cycle, where uh, you know all this sort of material wealth, all that kind of uh, drive, um, is still the uh, the species trying to evolve. It's it's not quite ready. It's not quite at the stage to realize what it what it really is is part of the universe, and, it, and we are nothing more than the universe sort of waking up and being self aware. So I thought that was cool. Anyway, interesting uh, start to these shows. You never know what the fuck's gonna come out of Brian's mouth. <laughs> Adult content. <laughs> Sorry, kids. And man, I remember I tried so hard, but my, you know, I'm 50 years old, so <laughs> body mouth and all. <laughs> uh, but I remember some people in the past would be like, you know, I'd love to play your uh, videos on the speakers, Brian, but you swear so often I can't have my kids listening to that. So uh, my my apologies. Uh, what the hell does that mean? Say, so I, I, <laughs> what is that a drug or something? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you guys are going on about in the lounge here. Um, anyway, uh, so uh, what the hell should we talk about here today? Um, um, the level one class just finished, and I think that they were doing candlestick patterns this week. I uh, did see lots of conversations about, you know, engulfing bars and harammies and bull rammies and bear rammies and empires. Actually, I did like the conversation I saw about candlestick math. Uh, and uh, if you're in doubt of, um, you know, maybe a half a dozen candles, just maybe try combining the candles and see what the entire price action uh, gives you. It's a really cool, uh, uh, really cool um, adaptation. Uh, of the candlestick uh, concept. Really cool. Um, so uh, it was great to see that uh, the class was just humming along there. Um, I was also uh, really pleased to see that uh, the TAs are just killing it and our instructor Graham uh, uh, full of piss and vinegar and um, just um, it was great. I mean I was very pleased to see uh, everything going along there so Way to go, guys. Everybody just keep on keeping on. Um, and I actually can already start to see if from a few of the students uh, that are very, very proactive. They're kind of going, okay, I see where this is going. Okay, I get the idea. So, and really, uh, the three-step sort of process, uh, I think on balance is a really great, simple way for new people to trading to set yourself up for success. 
Um, as you mature as a trader, you can get into more high octane, more uh, high anxiety uh, trade setups, um, and to really understand what the mechanics of the market, what's actually going on underneath. Um, but, uh, you know, for our level one education program, I actually really, you know, looking back in hindsight, I, you know, I tell you, I think a lot of this that I do here is divinely get driven. Um, uh, but actually I'm really pleased that the, that the way that we build the level one to just get you going on working and building, uh, your trading plan, um, giving you sort of that overall context of, uh, of the world and life and all that with uh, a kind of a crash course in capitalism. Uh, but then, you know, the second half of our uh, level one program, we really like you to leave uh, understanding that three step process uh, really, really well. Um, so, um, you know, actually now you guys are going to spend the next, what, three or four weeks in indicator land. So uh, you guys are really going to get good at, uh, at identifying divergences in volume and price momentum. So, um, yeah, uh, I really like the, the direction they're going. I'm so pleased with uh, Kiran uh, as our level two instructor. And the cool part about that is what I'm seeing, and it just makes common sense, is um, as uh, people work through the education program, you know, your first 90 days as a trader, hey, <laughs> don't expect at the end of that 90 days you're just going to be killing it. I mean, that's that's not realistic. But what I do like is this, you know, first, you know, stand up on your own two feet. But first walk, uh, you know, then jog, then run. You know, first crawl, then walk, then run. You know how it goes. And what, uh, what the Level 2 program does is, okay, you understand trading plans. You understand risk management. You understand the basics of setups. Now we're going to kick it up a notch, you know, so we inject things like volume profile analysis, uh, gap theory, uh, moving average analysis, horizontal support and resistance. And actually what I've uh, seen, <clears throat> which I'm super excited about, is uh, the site in itself is so big and so robust, we're starting to see little pockets of special interest developing within the site and uh, we do have professional day traders who actually are in the community just working away doing their craft um, and you know because this is a global world sometimes they're working through the London kill zones and you know that's midnight my time I should really be heading off to bed around then uh, sometimes uh, you know so, some people prefer the New York kill zone and that's when I'm most, most active on the site um, and, and then others, you know, Zach, uh, he lives out there in Hawaii, so actually trading the Asian kill zone and, you know, Australians and people those in Asia, that you're probably best to focus in on that uh, trading window. And the cool part about it is that, you know, our, the time-tested principles work great, just, you know, moving from zone to zone to zone to zone. Um, so really it's a, it's a question of identifying, you know, how are you going to set yourself up for success? Does it really make sense that you're going to set yourself up that I'm going to be trading at 1, 2, 2 a.m. in the morning every single day? Is that really realistic? Uh, and the, and like I said, TRI's community is getting robust enough now that uh, we have professional traders. that, And I love this. If uh, I think this is the absolute best compliment I could possibly give. Uh, to the people at top step is in essence I like to just funnel them you know you maybe you come through crypto maybe you come through stock trading futures trading whatever you know when those markets are relatively soft and you know I would suggest to everybody if you really want to you know a very real uh, look at capitalism um, you listen to this gentleman because I think uh, he's right I mean it's not very friendly but he's right uh, where the heck is uh, Mr. Happy? Here he is. Uh, I don't know whether I get in trouble showing you this link or not, but anyway. Uh, Anton Krull destroys retail broker. Well, I mean, the point, the most important point he makes, I think, in this entire video, it's like two hours long, is just simply that if you're a professional trader, then what you have to do 
is you have to like build your trading plans out to address different types of markets, different types of trading states. Um, and you can't just pigeonhole yourself, you know, like I just trade Bitcoin. <laughs> I'll tell you, over the past couple months, uh, being sort of like a swing trader in Bitcoin has been a real pain in the ass. And, you know, Julian's kind of getting frustrated because he loves trading his gold and gold really hasn't been trending over the past three months. So, you know, you might actually go through periods where you just, you know, one particular asset, well, that's just sort of dormant right now. I got to be overdoing this. Um, and that's, that's, and that, you know, what I see, you know, of course, a lot of people that watch these shows are super crypto oriented and, you know, want to buy the altcoins and their Lambos and all that kind of stuff, right? But I can tell you right now, I mean, look at the world. Is this really a kind of world where, new ventures are sp springing up and you know <laughs> and people are talking about the growth and the future i mean you know, if anything this is a fantastic because everything is so extremely extreme right now this is a fantastic time where you can actually ask that question and go well no clearly not people are shitting their pants right now and wondering you know am i even gonna have a job six months from now so, you know, looking for that hundred and, you know, it's interesting because every year we always go through the, you know, buy when it snows, sell when it goes. And really, uh, I had dinner with uh, one of my local partners here last night and we were just kind of joking. He's sitting there at the table going, fuck, I wish it was fall. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, it's summer's here. It's like, this is the best time of year. And he's like. Yeah, but I can't buy anything, <laughs> which I thought was perfect. That's like a total trader because, <laughs> uh, you know, this easiest slant. And I've been doing this in the crypto space for like five years now. And I tell you guys this every single year. The easiest thing to do in this space is just, you know, I think about every three or four years, you get an anomaly year where it flips around and everybody remembers that where, you know, Bitcoin moons into the end of the year. Uh, but most of the time in capitalism, the markets trough into the end of the year and it's a fantastic opportunity to buy. Uh, and then on the flip side, uh, into the spring and here we are in June and of course kind of a screwy year anyway because of the COVID stuff, uh, a lot of the venture capital stuff was flying. And I thought it was interesting, even in the crypto space, there was a what I would consider a speculative blow off top there. Um, and I had a lot of people on the site go, hey, Brian, should I get in this DeFi? Should I go buy some of that comp? Should I chase? Should I chase? Oh, I'm getting so excited about this. So, I mean, ironically enough, even though it was an incredibly small and compressed bull market, there was actually a little bit of a bull market there. Um, I, I don't even know. I don't... I don't think it's still going, uh, but, uh, you know, you never know in this crazy world. And the irony of it all is we, you know, we're living in this funny Fed world. You know, Fed just comes out and says, uh, we're in buying the warrants market. We're going to guarantee all derivatives. <laughs> Boom. New 52 week highs on everything. So, you know, that could happen. Um, wow. There was a funny rant. Uh, but uh, yeah, do yourself a favor uh, if you haven't watched that Anton Kroll uh, video. Very sobering look at uh, the trading world right now. Um, you know, the general message that I have for uh, Monday to Friday in the public is I think it's really typified by this chart. You know, this is exactly what I'm talking about, uh, you know, level oneers. Uh, just coming to the education program and just learning the real basics of setups. Interestingly, I, I pretty much walked the entire site and the entire public through this setup. You know, as we were uh, going through the inverted head and shoulders and painting upside objectives, I remember as they were happening, talking about gaps being filled in, so we were at location. So then it was really a question of do we have confirmed divergence and such a beautiful example of a big, fat, confirmed bearish momentum divergence up here. And then, you know, this is a fascinating anecdote that sometimes the best trades don't really set up in like really pretty um, M's. And ironically enough, the M coming in here, I would actually say, oh, geez, what a shitty level to get short. 
in this particular case it was just a it was just a really fast two day event bang bang and then fail and then what's interesting about this is it spent like literally a, a week just driving you crazy <laughs> what am i gonna do what am i gonna do what am i gonna do uh, um I mean, what do you say about this other than um, the, I would make the argument that the trade is on and ironically enough, you know, and actually we, uh, I was talking with somebody about this recently, but it's a really good anecdote that, you know, we can look at a chart like this and, and say, you know, it's down and, you know, on a clothesline basis, we're getting lower lows. But you notice that like on all of these candles, you could make the argument that almost all of these highs in here are almost exactly the same level. So you can get scenarios like that where, yeah, we're in a bear market, but we could easily have candles, you know, come pop back up into the top end of the range here and just do nothing more than just create these funny little wicks. Um, so, you know, we often talk on the site about candle body lows for trade location, wicks and tails like to be eaten. We got that tail down in there, this tail right here. So could I see, you know, a candle that makes a funny little wick down in here and then we're right back up here? Sure. Uh, the, but at the same time, too, the market is pointing down. Um, probably also, too, a really good example of um, trying to uh, couple um, fundamental drivers with price action. So, uh, you know, all through this event, of course, that was Barstool Guy. And Mr. Barstool Guy, man, is he ever getting cocky, eh? And uh, the old timers, I'm reading a lot of sort of rags and stuff on, uh, on uh, the media where the old timers are really starting to get a little pissed off at this guy. <laughs> and he just keeps laughing at them. And uh, if he's making money, then awesome. Pats off to him. And uh, you never know, you know, maybe you'll find five, ten years from now, you're going to be buying the Barstool uh, Mutual Fund because he's so rich and he's so smart. You never know in this crazy world. I mean, you got to give kudos to him. I don't know whether uh, he applies, uh, you know, uh, what I would consider sort of industry standard risk management. Um, I do see and I hear. A lot of people have made some serious money on this recent run-up, but I look at the risk management and I and it it just it, it makes me all oh my my you know it just makes me weak because I can't take those kind of risks that people are taking. Uh, hats off to you if it works. Uh, you know there are lots of people that leave Vegas winners. Uh, you know the good majority don't, but there are people that win at the game in Vegas and they do well. Uh, I would say, uh, just looking at this chart and then sort of looking at what's going on in the world, you have to ask yourself, like, why did the market actually bottom here? Um, and I would make the argument that the market bottomed in here because the uh, governments came out with a massive stimulus and basically subsidized payments to the population in, in place of, of incomes they, and, you know, that big uh, CARE Act. And it was remarkable how quickly it was passed, too. That that really surprised me. But anyway, so, you know, in the face of that, and then, of course, you know, if the government um, approves a $2 trillion debt, then the central bankers can take that debt paper and they can reserve lend against it. And the industry standard these days is like 10 to 1. But, you know, I even heard from the Fed through the crisis that they were like, you know what, don't even worry about reserve ratios now. It's not, not important. <laughs> it's like, what? Oh, God, you're killing me. So, you know, also, too, I might argue that... Um, um, in this kind of environment, there was legislation and stuff that was sort of encouraged to uh, remove a lot of the uh, obstacles from the, um, the um, post-housing uh, crisis that sort of kept a lot of the banks and stuff out of the market. Um, I would prefer those stay in place, but was there an agenda by the bankers to try and prop prices up here? Um, 
and make it almost seem like eh, it's no big deal it's no big deal um to get that legislation passed i don't know you know that's the uh, jekyll island people uh shane he loves that book uh that would be sort of along their kind of lines but you know the irony of it all is now wall street um I, well not wall street but the the new york banking cartel uh they have permission to go back into the venture capital market in size um and even you know remember last cycle everybody got upset at goldman sachs for taking bets against their clients and I used to joke about the Moppets, and I was joking with somebody in one of the classes about the Moppets. I gave them an assignment to figure out who the Moppets were. Uh, well, guess what? <laughs> That's all back now. <laughs> oh, goodness. And I, I even put a tweet out to it. And of course, you know, when I put these kind of tweets out to me, they're like earth shattering. But the public, uh, you know, all the people that sort of followed my crazy Twitter stream, they weren't, well, actually there's a couple likes, but not too many people were really even interested in this. But I was like, oh boy, here we go again. So, you know, the next bull market, this, you could actually look back. I'm my hunch is you look back and you'll see that the next bull market was probably started the day that this happened. Um, so the banks finally got what they wanted. Now, all of the sort of restrictions and stuff from the uh, the U.S. housing crisis debacle uh, have been removed. Uh, so uh, get ready for it. The point there is that the next bull market is being laid now. Now, uh, if you think about that, that, um, you know, why did the stock market bottom here? Well, that means that by definition, as soon as whatever that CARES Act money has been spent, well then, what then? And heaven forbid this virus actually picks up again, we got to close everything down again. Uh-oh. I'm hearing that things are getting a little bit crazy down in the southern U.S. <laughs> well, that's one way to look at it. Um, so... Uh, and what was interesting is through this period, and everybody seems to have forgotten about it, but through this period, they started talking about, well, there's going to have to be a second bill. Um, and um, and that was expected to be passed about the middle of July. <laughs> Can you see how the market is actually setting up so that when that vote is supposed to happen, and I think it's around the 16th, if I'm not mistaken, this market is now set up so heading into that vote very much like this heading into that vote they can bring this market down hard get everybody shitting their pants again right technically we know that this market is very heavy it's very weak so we already know ahead of time that the table is set but you know, what's important here is to understand the, the context of why do markets bottom? You know, Julian was absolutely astounded by this. As soon as that fucking vote passed, the market just, boom, other direction. And any kind of sign of weakness following that, the Fed came in and bazooka, bazooka, bazooka. Why? Because <laughs> they can do the $2 trillion of, uh, of U.S. debt equals $20 trillion of purchasing power by the, uh, the, the central bankers. So, you know, like I think the entire world uh, or the U.S. economy is like $12 trillion. So technically, the Fed could come in and just buy the whole damn U.S. economy, right? <laughs> anyway. So here we are. That old stimulus program has spent out. And you hear a lot of right-wing politicians down the states going, these deadbeats, they shouldn't get any more money. No more unemployment insurance and all that. So you can see that the, the, there's been a lot of reluctance just to pass that through willy-nilly. But you can see how the market is actually setting the event up. So that, you know, as we head into the event, what usually happens, and I've seen this about three or four times over my career, it doesn't happen very often, but what usually happens is that the big vote happens and it fails because all the fiscal conservatives are like, whoa, well, we got to really think about that. This is just too much, right? You know, just we can't go socialist. We don't want big government, blah, blah, blah. Um, 
And the market just falls out of bed on that event. <laughs> I remember one time back, uh, geez, I think it was around long-term capital management when they went under back in the late 90s. Um, same sort of thing. There was going to be a bailout or something. I think it was around that time period. I can't remember exactly. Um, I was working for a company called CM Oliver. If any of you old timers remember CM Oliver, I'd be impressed. Um, and, um, and, uh, led the first, uh, bill reading failed. Um, market absolutely tanked on the event. And then all of the politicians come scurrying back, Russia. Okay, 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 yeah, fine, fine, fine. We'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it. And it's done. That's what usually happens. But, you know, like I said, I, I, all, almost all of us were surprised. And even when the vote happened, there was one little right-wing Republican guy, uh, congressman, who's like, uh, shouldn't we debate this at all? And everybody's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. So that really surprised me. So, you know, let's see how hard they drive this thing down. Remember, Wall Street got what it wants. Wall Street, of course, has unlimited buying power and they want more. So let's get another one of these big fat stimulus programs passed because this is a crisis after all. And the interesting thing about this is that two trillion over here plus three trillion over here, that's five trillion. So in essence, what that means is that the Fed can actually expand the economy to $50 trillion. So, and, you know, like Andrew and I were sitting last night, we were going through the math. Usually what happens is markets expand in sort of threes. And so you get like the first wave that goes three. So let's say we go, um, you know, like a, a dollar to three dollars, then three dollars uh, to nine dollars, then nine dollars to what twenty seven dollars. Um, what am I? Um, no, that's not. Uh, well, I mean, that's that's a fun <laughs> ratio, but that's not what I'm trying to say here. Um, if if the purchasing power of the uh, of the currency falls in half then um, how long does it take for uh, the market to go um, 10x? And it actually takes like three waves. I think that's what I'm trying to say here. Anyway, um, I'm not articulating myself. I disregard that. Anyway, point that I would just make here is I believe that the market is being set up for this political event here that's supposed to happen the mid to the end of July. Um, also, too, you know, Brian and his crazy celestial events. I have a very big apex event that happens here at the end of June, beginning of July. Um, so put it all together, I can definitely feel a, a quite a bit of increased anxiety, um, you know, throughout our society. I, I just look out the window. Um, and then also to, you know, trade location. If I look at something like this, I'm not filled with a lot of bullish enthusiasm. If anything, and just, there's not really an, a heck of a lot for me to do here. So, you know, if that's the case, you know, a lot of big stocks sort of look like this. You know, there are some, you know, short ideas, uh, short proxies you can be long some uh, stock market vehicles that make money uh, they go up in value when stocks go down so we've got those kicking around the site um, been taking a lot of profits and just simply uh, exiting a lot of positions that jumped up here recently so um, but I'm also taking this time right now like I said earlier um, while that's going on, there's no reason why you can't work away on things like a day trading uh, plan, trading futures contracts. And this is just a simple concept of trading horizontal support and resistance levels uh, that um, one of our uh, site veterans, he's my uh, TA uh, in the level three program, he's going through this right now uh, and, and practicing his ass off. Uh, you're getting ready and we you know I want to take them over to top step we got a bunch of people at uh, TRI that's over at top step so I think Zach's ready 
And then what I thought was really cool is that uh, locally here in Vancouver, we're more so west coast, and that Asian kill zone is very agreeable. It's late afternoon for us. So uh, Andrew's going to join him. And so, you know, we're actually working very diligently away and not wasting the time while a lot of the broader market, the Insano bull market, uh, is kind of calming down, and especially like in crypto, right? I don't see the 10x moves, the 100x moves here. So take the time while the market's sort of going through its broader malaise and really focus on things like lower time frame futures trading setups and stuff. Uh, as well, too, I'm doing a lot of research into little junior companies and VCIM names. Uh, in fact, actually, I have this really cool shopping list that I'm sharing with the site right now. Um, you know, I, I can uh, right now I've got a shopping list on the venture exchange. These are all companies. I really like companies with, with less than... Uh, Really, ideally, less than 30 million out. If they're in that 30 area, I'm, I'm comfortable. If we start getting 40, 50 million out, that's a little heavy. Don't really like to see them less than about, you know, say 15, 20 million out. So, anyway, this is a really simple screen that I just put together on the Canadian Venture Exchange. It shouldn't surprise you. There's a hell of a lot of gold companies in here because the gold market is super hot. And actually, a lot of what are these uh, these venture capital companies do is. Uh, if their share structure is correct, and actually that's exactly what this idea that I'm working on right now, M3 Metals, uh, back here they were an iron ore company. <laughs> that didn't go very well. So they completely reorganized the company. They did a big old huge financing, and they went into the gold business. And now they have a gold mine down in, I think it's Arizona, um, that they're starting to produce some really interesting numbers coming out of it. It's actually an old producing mine that they're just refurbishing. So it's just a really good example. This is the kind of thing that I'm doing my research on. I haven't even pulled the trigger. Just spent some time through the weekend going through the list and trying to really understand the story. You know, really get to know what the hell's going on here uh, on, on the ground. And then obviously, you know, gee whiz, you know, keep in mind there's a weekly chart. Give me my weekly W's and you know what Brian's going to be thinking. And isn't this cool? Like a trader's life. Look how this just came politely down into a reload zone back against the original lows. Remember, this is the level where they did the big financing at. Directors are long from 17, which is the yellow line. So you can kind of see how the directors here, <laughs> if they can get this stock up through 17, the directors are laughing, right? And, you know, David, uh, one of our longtime site members, he would look at this and he'd go, gee whiz, that's a head and shoulders, you know? So, you know, this is, and, you know, this is what I do for fun. <laughs> you know, after I, uh, uh, I, you know, Andrew and I had a really nice, uh, we went for Korean barbecue last night, so it was totally cool. But that's here nor there. Um but, uh, you know, doing stock research like this, this is what I do when uh, when the market's quiet and I'm just hunting new ideas, right? Um, so, really, I thought this is a really good example of a good old VCIM model that was taught to me by an old floor broker years ago. Really trying to understand what does an actual stock, what, how do we say this? What does a good structural story look like? And this is really more about structure. They just went and got a gold mine property. We don't even know what the hell is in the, in the ground. But by identifying quote-unquote value, you can see where you can come in and join their party. And you're not coming in and buying some fucking top, right? Some hype, some pump, whatever. And you're just walking into a trap. I mean, how many of you bought into this kind of stuff in crypto? It's the same shit, just different pile. So, uh, you know, I do the same research in crypto right now. There's a bunch of crypto names that all look like this. Anyway, so this is, this is the kind of research that I do on the side. And it also speaks to that, you know, don't just pigeon yourself, hold yourself, well, I just trade altcoins. Well, if altcoins are just sitting there doing nothing, then that means by definition you're not doing anything. Try, try and be flexible, right, and have an, a number of different approaches uh, given, you know, different market states. So I suppose we ought to, you know, on that note, ought to head on over to, uh, first off, um, did we have questions? Um, did you guys uh, give me a, uh, a link or anything from, uh, from the class? Let's see what we got here. OK. 
Kevin digging digging for gold. R R and Kirkland is V C I M V C I M Foster Rose Osman. All right. Uh, Kevin, did you fire me a link uh, to that? Oh, is that what this is? Uh, let's see what we got here. Copy. And we will go boom. And go boom. And boom. All right, so 628, that sounds like now. So when entering a trade based on a candle pattern, is it advisable to put the bid a few satoshis? in this case for BTC, below or above the candlestick that fires the entry or put it at the exact wick tail high low. How do you do it, Brian? Um, well, uh, on all candle patterns, the, um, the confirmation of the candle is a breaking of the, the previous candle. So the level has to be specifically uh, one tick above or one tick below, whatever that level is. Um, you know, I, I, I don't like the idea of market buying or selling. So, uh, you know, you might see a candle uh, fire and by definition, you know exactly what the level is that the candle fired. So by definition, you know exactly, and I, like I said, I got one tick above or one tick below uh, whatever that uh, that confirmation level is, and that's exactly the order level. It's pretty simple. Um, this also too, though, it's it's a you know as you I, I think you know to start off, it's good just to best practices. Let's keep with you know what is the sort of textbook level, and that is what I just said. Um, at the same time, too, you know as you mature as a trader you're going to actually come to learn about price action. And you have the feel, especially if you can get to the point of interpreting the DOM, uh, seeing, you know, actual order flow. Um, and, you know, for those that are a bit more advanced, you know, um, you know, uh, Stephen, for example, in our Friday uh, group um, um, daily brief there, he likes to give his harmonic levels a little margin of error where eh, price could be a little bit higher than that or price could be a little bit lower and it's still within sort of my wheelhouse so the textbook answer is well that's the level that's the level that's the level the in reality i mean maybe you find that the market gaps higher um and you see that some guy has parked a mazillion, gazillion, bazillion bid right at that level, and you want to get in. Then what that implies is that Mr. Gazillion, bazillion, whatever he's doing, um, he has to get filled in total before you can get your fill. Is that realistic? Quite often, if you see a bid wall, maybe price dips into it, but quite often, uh, you know, the floor or wall, ceiling, whatever you want to call it, it, it usually holds. And then, you know, if it does hold on sort of first test kind of idea um, and and the market senses that, that sellers are running out of steam, it might quickly reverse and, and zip higher. So, you know, in that particular case, you would look at the DOM and you'd say, well, there's no point in putting my order with that guy because I'm going to be behind him. I'll put my order one tick in front of him. And if it's a spoof order, you might see that that huge bid wall just instantly is pulled. So you better pull your order at the same time. So if you're going to play that game, well, then you, that means you're going to have a lot of sort of thinking to do on the ground. You want to keep it simple? Well, the candle pattern is the candle pattern, and the buy or sell level is basically one tick above or below whatever the trigger level is. So I hope that helps answer that question, and that's that's my you know career interpretation of price action. Um, I guess what short answer, you know, very strict. Uh, just trade the level. Long answer, well, as you mature as a trader, you're going to have to learn to interpret price action and what you're seeing with order flow. 
Uh, is the person who asked that question, are they here? Are you in the Hangout? Are you on the YouTube? Hello, Sim Bitcoin. Damn, PTC chart looks so similar. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Uh, and third level is trading education on super steroids. <laughs> yeah. BSV is turning into a double bottom in weekly. Looks like free money from BSV in weeks to come. All right. Well, uh, sounds like Aditya, Aditya is a BSV bull. I think we had somebody on the site, um, Mick, Mickey. And he came and did an interesting presentation at BSV. I think you can make an argument from the application um, itself that, you know, from a cost basis and stuff like that, BSV is, sounds like a good idea. The only problem is the, um, is the uh, cheerleader there. He's a character, all right, that's for sure. Didn't he get into some hot water here recently? What did he do recently? I seem to remember he did or said something that everybody was aghast at. Oh, I think I heard recently he got excused from a court uh, case or something like that because of his autism. <laughs> I thought that was interesting. And people, uh, people on Twitter were like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I don't know whether that's actually any, any, uh, anything really market moving. I don't know. I mean, uh, we can take a look at BSV. Where should we put it? Ooh, that OMG. Remember a couple of weeks ago, I was kind of like, oh, watch that OMG. Oh, boy, that looks heavy. Oh, hello. What's going on over here? Digi. You got to love Digi. Digi was one of the first coins that took off uh, back in, uh, was it 2016, 2017? I remember that. Look at that outside upside reversal. Jeez, Kevin, do you see? Actually, you guys uh, just didn't level one. You just did this. Can you see the, what, what do we call this bar right here? Wow, look at that bar too. That's one sexy bar. No one? 1320. Landon, you're here. I know you said you're in the level one course. Gee whiz. Uh, I always pick on these guys. Man, it's so hard to get these silly things to line up perfectly. Uh, what's that say? 97. Nope, not yet. Hey, caramba! There we go. 20. All right, so let's see what we got here. What is that? Excellent, Brian. I think you've been around the site for a while. Starts with a K. <laughs> Josh, key reversal, baby. How about you guys on uh, YouTube? Do any of you guys know that? Uh-oh. I did tell ya. Mm, I apologize if I'm butchering your name. Bimoli, Bimoli, took his message back. I was going to say, outside engulfing. Very good, Anthony. Mr. I hacked Mount Gox. Yeah, we see, that, that, maybe that was it. Uh, I was shocked to hear about that. He, I publicly announced, uh, admitted that he uh, was the Gox hack. Fascinating. Anyway, uh, this one candle here is what we call a key reversal. Very powerful candle. So it really doesn't surprise me. Market was like, ah, no, you're not going back down there. But what a great looking chart, eh? So pretty. One low, two lows, three lows. Uh, who knows how we're going to finish here today, but it looks like it's trying to put in some sort of uh, reversal bar here today. Didn't open up below this yesterday's low, though, so I can't call it a key reversal. But uh, fine looking can do. Nothing wrong with that. Um, and actually, this is also, I think, a good example of an LJ. I wonder how old Leanne's doing these days. I hope she's doing well. Not quite. We'd like to see a W on the other side of this trend line. So. Anyway, uh, that's interesting. I don't, you know, the fact that it's rallying here on almost no volume, though, that's a little suspicious. 
Uh, what was the one you want to look at? BSV. What the hell is that guy up to? Do you want to look at it versus currency, or do you want to look at it versus uh, cryptocurrency? Oh, there's a interesting one. BSV. Is that what it is? What was the damn symbol? BSV. Uh, cryptocurrency. I wonder what I'm doing wrong there. BSV. Hmm. Oh, BVS. <laughs> Somebody's slightly dyslexic. All right, so where do you want to look at this thing? Uh, who is that? I did tell I I did yeah. <laughs> I did yeah. Where do you want to look at this damn thing? What do you want to look at it in? Euros? South uh, South Korean won. How about South Korean won? You want to trade South Korean won? Clock is ticking. All right, well, time's up. I gave you a moment there. All right, uh, number next question. I have seen you in some daily brief that you say, quote, it is not good to turn a winning trade into a losing trade. However, in the case your setup says you got to take profits in certain level and move stop loss until certain level, but let's say the price almost reached my first profit objective and then goes back. Shouldn't we wait until the trade resolves? And if that goes back until your stop loss? In that case, it turned into a losing trade, but I followed my plan. I'm confused with that. Thanks. Perfectly good question. Uh, really, really good question. Uh... You know, half of this game is just, are you uncomfortable with being uncomfortable? So, really, when I say things like, um, shouldn't let a winning trade turn into a losing trade, it's really more a question about how much anxiety you as a person can handle. And can you handle situations where... Uh, and remember, you just got to come back day in, day out. Can you handle situations where you were, you saw your account was green, things were going well, and then all of a sudden, boom, uh, you're handed a loss. Uh, some, you know, for a lot of people, that can be psychologically extremely uh, damaging. Um, so... You know, with something like the bot setup, uh, I really do think it's a good idea that um, you put yourself into a position where, because remember the the bot setup is an assumption of a trend continuation. Quite often we see trend continuation attempts uh, falter and, and flounder and fail. Um, if you, you know, like the gold market uh, recently was, I think, a very good example where you just, you just, if you did decide to take the bot setup, and it was a big one, don't get me wrong, uh, but if you did decide to take this, really, you should have done absolutely nothing through the whole event. But I'll tell you, it was damn difficult. Uh, where the hell's that church? Uh, I show it to the public almost every day. I think it's on the other one. Mm, over here. Uh, this, this was not easy at all. Uh, how are we going to do this? Let's go like that. And like that. Um, so, you know, in this particular case, if you had taken this bot, and maybe you're like, well, you know, I got one low, two lows, three lows, looking good here. And you, and look how close it came. And I mean, damn, that, I thought for sure that was going to get busted out, but it didn't, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and you just add the ball, you have to add the balls just to stay there and do nothing. Um, but I do quite often see that if we have like a move up into here, it takes out these highs. If this sort of starts to flounder, I often see reversals like that. So specifically with the bot, 
if we hit this level and we pull back here, that's not usually a good sign. So I don't have any reservation. I would prefer just to hop off. And you know what I like to do is like front run the bot. So if I saw this and I was like, I want to try again, I would love to try and get in. You know, just assume that this is gonna work and try and get in off of like this reversal bar. So that if we do have move stop to scratch and it does come down here, well then I get out here and I still made a little bit of money. But I'm not going to say that's easy and that sometimes is asking for trouble when I do that. Market, I'll sneak in here, market will come up and then I'll just go, see ya! <laughs> and I'm just slammed out. So, um... With regard to the bot, I would prefer that you learn what I have become accustomed and comfortable with. But after some time working with it, if you're kind of like, you know, like especially this level here. I've had a lot of traders over the years say, you know, Brian, once we get to this level, I'll move my stop to scratch so I don't get hit. But quite often it sucks if we do something like this and I walk away and you know this becomes my profit and then the damn market just goes woohoo straight up to my target and i miss this monster win so i'm not gonna trail my stops because it's either look at i'm right and i get that nice big fat three to one or i'm wrong and i just walk away at scratch so the point I'm trying to make here is now that turns into a conversation of you as a mature trader studying both methodologies and really ultimately coming to your own conclusions. Uh, remember, what we here at TRI want to do is set the table for you. You're going to put in the miles and you have to put the miles in to get good at this. There's no second guessing the, the workload. You have to do it. Um, and through those miles, you're going to be like, well, you know, like I just said, I've noticed and my data tracking suggests that it's worth not moving stop. Yes, I know in these kind of scenarios, the anxiety level is quite high, but the actual numbers play out that it's worth just not doing anything here. I definitely like the idea, especially on something like this. If you had a move that went all the way up here, don't let this turn into a losing trade where your account balance goes down. I really don't like that idea at all. Um, at worst, in this kind of scenario, you just simply say, look, I, you know, I, I took the shot. It was in my favor. It started to melt down, and I just walked away, and my capital is preserved, and I'll just hunt the next setup. Um... I don't know. I sure hope that gave you some food for thought. I mean, I, like I said, to just start this off, that's a good question. That's that's a very probing question, and really, the true answer is we got to figure out what works for you. And moving stops might not really sit that well with you. You're maybe you're a really level-headed guy, guy, and you're like Brian. I took the dollar risk. I'm willing to risk the buck. If I'm right, I make three bucks. And I'm just going to live with those numbers. Uh, you put the data on paper. <laughs> I guess not on paper. You know, in a spreadsheet, online, whatever. And the data validates your thinking. I like the idea of use the metric of my average winner should be bigger than my average loser. And I'm ideally shooting for 60 to 70% win rate. You get into those kind of numbers, I'm perfectly happy with you morphing the general principles that we teach in the program to actually fit your own personality. Nothing wrong with that at all. So I don't know whether that helps uh, answer that question. Is the person who asked that question here? What do you think? Oh, Colleen says, great explanation. Do you think I did that well, or was I just sort of talking out my ass? <laughs> I hope I answered that well. Kind of felt like I was uh, going off uh, sort of blah, blah, blah there. Oh, oh thank you. That's good. So Colleen liked that. Oh, so oh, Peter says that was very good. Oh, thanks. All right. 
Um, and you can write it in your plan. Damn straight. Yeah, in fact, really, ultimately, what should happen here is uh, build a plan and say, okay, well, for the next month, two months, if you will, every single bot setup I'm going to take, I'm not moving my stop. It's either I hit the three to one or I get stopped out at, uh, at, at a loss. Well, let's see what happens. You might be like, fuck it, Brian. I'm not moving my stops. I mean, the, the three to one ratio even makes being right only 50% of the time. It makes it worth it. Because when you get paid, damn, you get paid. So, um, all right. Sure, hope that helps. A couple of very good questions. Solid stuff. People are uh, seriously thinking. So I like that. Uh, what was it? I saw something that was asked in the level one. I was kind of like, um, well, if uh, Grim didn't give us an answer, um, uh, well, maybe it'll come to me in a bit. First, let's head on over and check in with uh, the good doctor. BSV USDT. So you, <laughs> you want to trade this thing versus Tether? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, now that's, that's a crypto enthusiast. <laughs> Should we talk about Tether? Uh, do you understand uh, the uh, uh, crazy Tether? I wonder, it'd be interesting to see whether the Chinese try and pull a run on the U.S. dollar through the tether. That would be fascinating. <laughs> um, okay, so what do we got here? There's a daily chart. I mean, the easiest thing to say just off the daily chart, and we're probably best to go to a higher time frame, but just the easiest thing to say there, obviously. Oops, actually, why don't we go? Uh, horizontal line boom well there's the top end of your range and just judging by this chart looks like there's the bottom end of your range so that's a pretty wide playground uh what's that 45 bucks up to 456 dollars <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> Uh, this is one of these blue chip investments uh, that's that's what you're getting me into here um, I suppose if you uh, if you catch these W's uh, solidly, there's some serious money to be made. But uh, let's do a poll just out of curiosity because it's interesting how, you know, I don't know, uh, Adit Aditya, I don't know if I'm spelling, pronouncing your name correctly. I mean, are you just a pumper? Do you have any idea what you're what you're doing here? Technical analysis kind of stuff here in the market. Is you're like uh, BSV is turning into a double bottom in weekly. Looks like free money, free money, really, from BSV in weeks to come. That to me doesn't really sound very professional. I don't know. And I mean, let's let's just do a poll. If you were looking for letters of the alphabet, is there any letter of the alphabet that seems to be repeating over and over and over here recently? YouTubers? Yeah, there's like six, 69, dude! My favorite number! <laughs> there's 69 people over there on YouTube. <laughs> so I want to see 69 versions of this. There's one. <laughs> Great. Well, we're off to a good start. <laughs> F, R, and 2, E. <laughs> Oh, uh, is that that's usually how they type it in like uh, on YouTube or something to try and scan <laughs> to beat the algorithms or something, eh? <laughs> Upside down, down. Tanje, Tanje, how you doing, buddy? Oh, I miss you so much, man. You should have come out to dinner with us yesterday, Tanje. Um. Yeah, well, I don't know, uh, Aditya. Uh, do you see the letters that they are uh, they are posting there? Uh, a P. Kath Kathleen sees a P. That's interesting. Whether I guess yeah, this could be a P up here. Is that what you see, Kathleen? That's not a good sign. <laughs> that much. Um, so, you know, the bottom line here is, uh, if we're seeing M's, uh, that, that's not a bullish sign, right? And more importantly, when I look at this, what I see is, and actual fact, this should, this should be a good, um, um, oh, well, that's good. 
Uh, happy birthday to your friend, Joe. Um, Tanjay. Um, is there anything that that I for the YouTube audience that I often um, that I often um, I, we kind of created a funny little expression for you guys that we would say off of uh, that level. I was grabbing the wrong tool here today. Uh, there we go. So that level and that level and that level. And that level. See where I'm going with this? Actually, it's kind of interesting because this is exactly what I was talking about um, um, with uh, Zach uh, learning how, uh, how to, uh, you know, the, the Australian dollar. It's just the exact opposite image. So the point here is on any of these kind of counter trend rallies into these, what do we call these levels? Don't you guys remember? I hey, did that for, uh, geez, a month or two on YouTube, and everybody was like, oh, they love that. But no, no, nobody remember? Hey, yeah, Colleen remembers. That's cool. We just call these no, 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 no levels. So the market rallies up. Right here is a great example. Market rallies up into here. I'm a bull. Look at me. And somebody goes, I don't think so. Get your ass back down there. <laughs> All right, and then it backs off, and it rallies back up. Nope, get your butt down there. You rally, no, I'm a bull. I know that. Get your butt back down there. So you can see somebody stepping in and, and knocking these things, right? Knocking this thing. Um, so that's, you know, that's how I would interpret that. Um, really, uh, what I would prefer, Aditya, is uh, the exact opposite of this scenario. If you're going to uh, say, hey, check out this coin, right? And this, this is why TRI works so well. Is I don't think anybody um, at TRI would post a chart like this to say, uh, "Hey, this thing looks like a screaming buy." <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so and maybe that's a bit uh, rude. My apologies if it is. But if you're thinking about buying, okay, I want to I want to join the good doctor. He's such a great guy. All that kind of stuff. Um, how would I approach this? Uh, you know, here's probably a good example. Um, you know, you can see the rally up and down and up and down. But do you notice, like, even here, you could have taken a half-decent shot. Look how the market went down and up and down and then up and then down and then boom. You know, there's a little bit of a rally. But this is what we're trying to get in front of, right? And that's by buying down in here. Well, same thing here. See the market going down, then it rallies back up, then it comes back down. You can see it did not go through these lows. And then turned up here. So, you know, ideally, what I'd love for you to show us here. Uh, I, uh, am I even close in pronouncing your name, Bimoli? We'll just call you Bimoli. Is uh, I want, I want, I, I, you know, if you had said, hey Brian, check out BSV on this date here, 9th of May, uh, then I'd be like, holy shit, who is that guy? I gotta know who that guy is. So this is what I need for you to find for me. Can you do that for me? Show me this, and I'll subscribe to your newsletter. And now the question ultimately at right now, and, you know, even, you know, like that, right? That, <laughs> that If you came to me and said, hey, Brian, hey, I got a tip for you. Check out BSV in here. I'd be like, holy God damn, son of a bitch. Uh, that, that's got buy signal written all over it. Um, so does current price action look like that? Let's go see. Uh, not quite. So, I mean, simply put, can't touch that, right? It's uh, nasty. I suppose, you know, and the problem here is, um, looks like there's, was that gap filled in? I don't know. This gap actually looks still unaddressed. I mean, it was filled in, filled in with a tail here. But, you know, Brian, wicks and tails like to be eaten. So that hole right there, that's bothersome. Uh, wicks and tails like to be eaten. Uh, I love, you know, here's a little freebie for you here, uh, Bimoli. I love uh, hunting candle body lows for trade location. I mean, think about this if you were like on this date right here, right? Going, okay, candle body low. Okay, we're rallying. There's an inside bar. Okay, I'm kicking ass, right? And you just think, okay, I'll work my bid right here. All right and boom you get your fill 
Finishes the day above where you bought it, so you're feeling pretty good. All right, look at that dip down again. Gave the opportunity to get filled again, but now it finished the day up here. Whoa, I'm doing really well. And then, woohoo! Oh, that's a W. That Beamish guy, he loves his Ws. Well, that's looking good. And woohoo! Away we go. So, you know, this is probably a pretty important level, that gap right there. I would even make the argument that this is probably your floor right in there. Um, so, in essence, um, you know, you could, in fact, you could look at this and go, that's a na 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 level, right? Somebody came down selling and somebody stopped it again there, right? So there's another na 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 level. And notice, right, market comes down into those levels and there's buyers there. Hey, get your ass out of there. So, with all that said, if I'm thinking trade location right now, you can see we just dammed out. Ugh, and really, this is all open air, all the way down into these levels here, right? And we can probably do new sort of horizontal support and resistance off of that low. And that low. So you can, you know, uh, ironically enough, actually, you can see exactly where the trades levels are. What would we call this being right here? What, what, and it, I, you know, and maybe, um, Miss, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Bamoli, uh, maybe you should write this down. Uh, if we were uh, th trying to describe where we are right now with regard to trade location, anybody know where um, where I'm going with this? Hey, very good, Jack. Oh, nailed that one. Excellent. Good, Landon. All right, this is... This is sort of like uh, you're, you know, you're caught right between two trenches. You know, you can see where the bears, they, they're putting up a hell of a fight up here, right, against these levels and really probably the original fail level, right? right this, is, this is brick wall. All these people that bought up here, they would love nothing more. Please get me the fuck out of here. Right, and that's probably anybody who sort of came in off of this low and, you know, buy the fucking dip, all that kind of talk, right, all through here. On these rallies up into here, they're like, oh, God, thank God, get me out of there, right? And that's exactly what happened there. So, you know, here we are. And then, you know, like we said, you know, those ends of range. So, you know, is this a good place for us to go and risk our money? What do you think the odds of of it going either direction are here? Where is that? Uh, uh, ideally, you're getting one hell of a tutorial here, man. <laughs> I sure hope you, you're appreciating the value. Uh, you know, people would pay like fucking thousands of dollars for like sort of this. this, And, the you know, that's the worst part about this, right? Is that it's not really rocket science, but nobody teaches this shit anywhere, right? Yeah, you're quite fortunate you're getting this tutorial here. Anyway, uh, it sounds like they, that person left. <laughs> I get the impression that they were told to come here and uh, tout this name. And frankly speaking, there's nothing for a guy like me here to do. Um, you know, caveat emptor, in my opinion, this is a total coin toss. Anyway, um it's a little dangerous sometimes asking uh, Brian's opinion. Uh, but, you know, if you ask my opinion and I happen to like it, I'll go and buy it right now. Uh, 282361. Oh, Jesus. What the hell does that mean? Is that how many seconds I have left to live? All right. Um, we answered all the questions in the... Um, in the um, that document. Uh, I don't know. Anybody over on YouTube want me to look at anything? Uh, do you dare? <laughs> no, I'm just going to give you my straight opinion. Uh, let's see. I suppose we could do a little Bitcoin overview. Uh, actually, what I'm watching right now is really interesting. I'm watching uh, the spreads. We've gone back to um, um, basically fighting at the contango line there on litecoin uh ethereum trying desperately to hold on to its bull but you can see it came right back down to the zero line it's checking that right now well oh, bitcoin's hanging in there still relatively positive starting to get some m's in tether so that might uh suggest a little bit of a counter trend rally um as you can see we're getting a little bit of uppy here so that's encouraging uh, you know, we did, unfortunately, recently just put in a ton of M's all over the place. Uh, so, 
you know, along and somebody mentioned there on um yeah, yeah, okay, well I'll do ETH. ETC, fuck man, I totally wanted that damn thing to bot out. And it just completely crapped out. I was so disappointed. So uh, there's the ETC. Just to quickly address that, I was totally interested in here. And you can see, look at all the moving averages. Everything came together so tight. And I was just like, come on, baby, come on, come on. I wanted it to get up through here, and I was totally going to pull the trigger, and she just <laughs> crapped out. So what sucks about this is, you know, had you taken these kind of longs in here, you, you got to book the loss. It sucks. And now, if you are an ETC bull, we got to start the whole damn thing all over again. So we can now have our first new low. We didn't go beyond 66, so if you're still a bull, hang in there. And we got to start carving out some sort of consolidation range. But I was, you know, I was very interested, and she just never followed through, which I was so disappointed in. Um... Yeah, that's and you know what's worse about this too is we actually have this very well defined market structure failure now. So, you know, this is uh, I, I don't like this at all. This doesn't look good. Um yeah, that there are better places me. You know, I would I would prefer just to give this some time and start carving out W's down in here versus trying to force something. There's, there's just, it, we were close. Everything was set up. Uh, you know, this was like Ethereum was bumping up against the top and DeFi was all the rage and all that. And then just over the last week, risk just came right out of the market. So we'll see, you know, uh, for this would be like more sort of position trade. I suppose I, I could see uh, lower time frame participants are going to look at uh, this as a full range. Uh, you can see that she's trying to inside bar here now. Uh, won't be harami, uh, but nonetheless, you know, if you are interested in hunting, and I, actually, I'm going to use like uh, this counter trend rally that I'm expecting uh, to actually add to my shorts on things like Ethereum. Um, but uh, you can see now these moving average. Well, actually, here, why don't we do the um, full one? There we go. So, ah, this is kind of cool. So 13 EMA right now. You can see how it's going to sort of align with all these old lows. All the people that bought in here, right? We get rallies back to 38.2. You can see where value low here is. So this, to me, looks like they're trying to figure out whether they can find some sort of bottom here. If they can, then expect your rallies into 38.2s and 50% levels, especially that candle right there right that move right there was the trap move so anybody who bought this double bottom thinking all right here we go those bulls right there are trapped right and that's uh, between uh, 635 to 636 up to 650 so I would fully expect any kind of counter trend rally you can see a moving average resistance it's basically the POC Although Pac is, I guess, just off of here, up here. Um, but I could definitely see that if we could get a counter trend rally back up into that wick, that's probably going to be stiff, stiff resistance. And maybe what this makes is uh, like a head and shoulders, like that kind of thing down the road. I could see something like that. So, you know, if you're thinking, okay, well, you know, I want to try and I, I do see a, a range here and I want to try and trade this up. You know, candle body lows here. Brian talk about that all the time. That's going to be an interesting level to keep an eye on. If we do get the counter trend rally into 38.2s um, and moving average resistance, all that kind of stuff, then if we do reload zones going back down, what a coincidence. 61.8, 78.6 is that candle body low. Wicks and tails like to be eaten, right? So uh, I would be like letting this bounce play itself out. Let the market come back down and test these lows. And if you can get a nice little pretty, you know, inside bar, W, whatever in this range, well, there you go. So that's sort of the way I would be looking at this right now. But in the face of this, I'm not a bull. Like, that's a big fat M. Uh, if these lows had held and we started working our way up, okay, trend continuation, awesome. But if anything, 
trading this counter turn rally right here, I don't think is, uh, that's not trading with the wind at your back. That's trading with the wind in your face. Yeah, there's some people that like to do that. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, but it's probably not my style. As I said, uh, and we can pop on over, I suppose, to the Ethereum chart now. This is probably more my style where, you know, I've got this big M now, bang, confirmed. Now I've got this next M, bang, confirmed. So I got pretty stiff market structure up top here. So I'm, you know, you can already see exactly what I'm thinking here. So uh, I would like to get a counter trend rally, candle bodies for trade location, 78.6, trend line resistance. I'd love to get a stab right up into this 240 area here uh, and go look at those uh, puts. I've already picked up a, a chunk of them. I bought about, about 20, 25% of my desired position and I'd like to take the next, you know, a couple weeks kind of thing to build out that position. Um, so, you know, that's, unfortunately, you know, moving average crosses. These moving average relationships are fantastic at sort of keeping you honest. Interesting how we potentially crossed, but we never did. I think you can say that that's a pretty darn solid cross there. And interesting, usually on these events, you get a check, like a kickback. And that's exactly what I think is happening now. So this down move, bang, confirms all this bearer structure, uh, which, you know, in, in itself is a lot of work. I mean, this, just to get this to actually stop going up and actually start going down and start breaking key support levels, this is a lot of heavy lifting. So what often happens is on this event, it's a big event, you know, and then of course Zach's in there buying against key lows, cocksucker. <laughs> so he's trading the dead cat bounce trade. And that's exactly what I think is going on is, you know, it took a lot of effort to drive this thing down through the lows. That event happened and it's sort of, okay, like, okay, now what? And quite often, I, I, I tell you, do it and do the research yourself. I mean, the point I'm trying to show you here, and, and this is what I tell all the school people, is I'm just setting the table. Now you you go, oh, wow, that's a cool shrimp fork. Uh, now let's go take the next week or two and just experiment. Let's see what this shrimp fork really does. Um, so this is a kind of analogy where when you get a moving average cross, often there's a kickback on the other side of that event. And I would fully expect that brick wall resistance is somewhere up in this moving average area up here. So, you know, down here yesterday, was it a good idea to like panic sell your Ethereum? Probably not. Um, I do like the idea that if you sort of think bigger picture, well, you know, I don't really mind putting on a position trade because this clearly is a structural fail level. But on that position trade, you have to risk all the way up to here. Keep in mind, I'm looking for that counter trend rally to actually short up here. <laughs> so uh, hopefully that gives you kind of context of what I'm thinking right now. And also too, I don't know whether you've noticed this in the market, but I've seen this happen repeatedly lately where uh, the coronavirus doesn't give a shit whether it's a weekend or if it's uh, midweek. But you know, all these capital markets, banks, government agencies, they all close on the weekend. So what I'm seeing lately, and we kind of saw this to a certain degree in the gold market, and then uh, the exact opposite in uh, the risk assets uh, all getting sort of hit into the close on Friday because nobody really wants to take the chance uh, through the weekend. Um, the fact that uh, crypto did dump yesterday also too is a little bit of a warning sign. Crypto doesn't usually like to dump on Saturdays. And I did see uh, somebody actually on social media make reference to that yesterday. I thought that was an interesting observation. So it doesn't surprise me, number one, uh, we haven't really seen any crazy ass follow through the, through the weekend. I did hear about one person got shot in uh, Louisville. 
and I think passed away. Um, and if anything, you know, all these Black Lives Matters movements and stuff like that, the last thing in the world that they really want to see happen is if these things start spiraling into like, you know, um, shooting matches amongst different rivalries and within that. And it was interesting, like the mother of the girl that was uh, killed in Kentucky, she's like, please, please, please don't fight amongst yourselves. Don't do that. Because uh, that, that, that will unwind this movement really quickly if uh, the bullets start flying amongst all these protests. Um, and not fired by the police, but f fired by the protesters themselves. But uh, as I said, I uh, didn't really see any major uh, fallout. Uh, I'm still hearing corona cases and all that kind of stuff is still ramping up. So I'm not really expecting huge rallies. But it do I do understand that, you know, this market's already on its knees. It's already low. And you look at like something like Bitcoin, same sort of thing. We, uh, we're sort of down near the bottom end of the range yesterday, coming into key support. Um, you know, I could argue probably too, you know, there's probably a bunch of trap bears in this tail here. So uh, they were short and they're caught. Uh, they would love nothing more than to buy the market back. So you can see they brought it right down into that <laughs> candle body low level and jackknifed it out of there. Um, and like I said, not really hearing any sort of absolute insane chaos going on through the weekend. So as a result, people aren't really freaking out. But the thing is, I mean, do you really want to short down here? I mean, uh, I mean, it was difficult, damn difficult. And there was even one day where they did a big fuck you. But I do like the idea of trying to be short from up top here. And actually, this was even a very well-defined Gartley inside bar failure. And uh, I think I've said in the free videos that uh, Stephen pointed out in his uh, Friday lecture to us that this was actually a huge, like, higher time frame harmonic level. So in a weird sort of way, it's quite ironic that the lower time frame setup came in almost perfectly off a massive higher time frame setup. So I'm going to see, and uh, maybe for tomorrow's video and stuff like that, I'm going to see if I can find that uh, reference uh, Stephen was making. So, you know, my comment for Bitcoin recently is just simply top end of the range, bottom end of the range. Very much a rangy market. And, you know, I mean, this is like 10400 This is 8000 That's a $2,500 um price range um, and just even taking short setups off of this little fail produced two to ones that the sort of lower time frame trader participants they're they're having a field day in this range it's so big um, and you know there was a news article I don't know whether I still have it but I think it absolutely perfectly typifies exactly what the market state is I think and what to expect going forward Let's see if I can find it. Um, darn. I always put these darn things away. Anyway. Um, the headline was just simply, um, let's see. Come on. My next one. Come on. Give it to me. Give it to me. Yeah, it was right around there. Uh, and darn. Oh, here it is. Perfect. Yeah, I found it. I think this is exactly this type of market, and I think crypto is exactly the same. Expect violently flat markets. And at any given point in time, and really I think it doesn't happen until the middle of July into that big political event that I talked about earlier, um, I, um, I I don't think, you know, we're probably going to have to wait till over here before you get any sort of uh, capitulation event um, in, the, in the risk assets. But through the next week or two, especially through the July 4th weekend, I think we are in a trading range, and you can see exactly the same thing in the stock market. 
um, and uh, and it's going to be violent. You know, it's going to be very wild action here. You know, it's we're in the type of environment where Mr. Barstool has lost all confidence in Mr. Buffett. So uh, he is, you know, a little bit of a tell. And uh, there are going to be a lot of people like him that are just going to pile in on the long. And then when, when the market gets a little bit soft, boom, they are gone. And they are going to pile out. And you're going to get insane price volatility through all this. So uh, party, party. <laughs> Okay, I've been ranting away here for a while. Uh, we talked a couple Bitcoin or a couple cryptocurrencies, gave you an update on what I'm seeing out of the corn and uh, Ethereum. I uh, took a look at uh, Mr. BSV, uh, his coin. I don't really see anything to be done there, to be honest with you. Um, you know, there are the individual stories, so get out there and hunt your weekly W's. Look for breakouts on volume. I mean, it's pretty straightforward when they come in. Ooh, look out. Um, I don't really have a lot on my shopping list right now. And like I said, like Andrew, he's kind of like, uh, well, you know, I'll start going shopping again in earnest uh, come the fall. So right now we're just sort of biding our time, just waiting for the uh, shoe to drop. If, you know, over time we can start carving out W's and start building momentum divergences heading to the upside, okay, we can start thinking that maybe all we did was just go sideways through all this. Uh, but for the time being, as long as I keep seeing all this Emmy type action, I, I, I just have to cool my jets. So. Okay, I think we'll leave it at that. What do you think? Uh, did you guys uh, here in the uh, hangout to uh, do a half decent job, get any value out of this? What do you think, Josh? Did I make you proud today? Sure hope so. All right, everybody. Uh, have yourselves a great uh, rest of your Sunday. Kind of a big hurry up and do nothing in the uh, market right now. Uh, but uh, keep your eyes peeled on uh, little uh, names that are popping out of W's on volume, as I've sort of said repeatedly here, as you never know. And, uh, of course, uh, be uh, sure to tune in to our Monday to Friday, bro Friday broadcast to... Uh, to uh, find out what uh, Warrant Kevin's uh, ramping up here and making bazillions of dollars off of. <laughs> All right. Take it easy, everybody. All the best, and bye for now.